Greetings, Glitter Gang, and welcome back to Catherine Scraps Live. This is the second show for Thursday, June 9th. We just did the kind of tutorial video on the smallest file folder. I am missing a nail. I'm sorry about that. Um, uh, so I do have the measurements here for the small file folder and the large file folder. I went over all of that in the previous video if you're watching um, a recording of this. And so now we're going to be decorating our file folders. So that's what we're working on in this episode. And then in between the episodes, when I was um, working on the uploads for the part of the show that we've already done, um, I just had the idea that I should turn the page basis for the Goldilocks album into a... Uh, file folders because all I want to do now is make file folder albums that's all I want to do so I may uh, scrap everything that I've already done for the Goldilocks album and just try and figure out how to rework it as a file folder album so we will see we will see what happens there we'll see how stupid future Catherine is that's what we'll see um, <laughs> but she's she I can foresee I can foresee some some idiocy. Eh. <laughs> oh, save the slider stuff for a later album. Yeah, I mean, I need something more than three file folders. So I'm going to, I mean, there has to be additional functionality. I have to do a twist on the file folders somehow. If I don't do the slider stuff that I had planned. Um, so we'll see. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. We'll see. All right. Where are we? Okay, so we're going to decorate these. You have confidence? Uh, well, I'm already thinking about how things I could do with file folders, like literally already thinking about it and thinking about other kinds of folders I could do things with because I do love a good, um, like, peachy school style folder, as you all know. So I'm already in my brain thinking about things I can do, <laughs> so, whatever, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, I don't, I, I like, you know, whatever, it's fine, <laughs> so, okay, all right, so the only, here's what we're working with, we're working with neutral background, okay, so we have totally neutral background, and then I have introduced green, blue, and pink, and a little bit of yellow, so color-wise, we can do whatever we want, really with these file folders. So I'm going to go to the uh, DIY shop paper first and we'll see what we like in here. Um, I already just had a thought, which is this uh, kind of chalkboard looking one for the middle one, maybe, and then for the small one, I just saw like a sunburst paper and I'm thinking to myself, wouldn't a sunburst look cute on the black, the yellow on the black? And then maybe do something pinkish for the largest file folder. So here's that sunburst. So I think I can do it. So let's grab this. And I'm going to grab two of them so I can do a full sunburst on the front and a full sunburst on the back. So it'll be a double sunburst. And then for this one, um, I actually, I think I'm going to need two as well because this is, this is what, five by seven? Yeah, this is five by seven. Well, I don't need two. I can pinwheel this actually. Just do it with one. So anyway, how was everyone's week? I saw the movie Lost City in the theater last night, um, which is a kind of like, all right, wait, before, I just want to think about what do I want that black to be sitting on? Do I want to... Do I want to pull the red forward more with a with something like this, or do I want to fo pull like the green forward more? I 
I kind of like this, to be honest. I do kind of like that. So maybe we'll go with that. Let's just look at the um, Echo Park. Before I commit, let's look at the Echo Park and see what we've got over here. Oh, I kind of like that green. Hmm. Kind of like that too. Man, do I have too many cute papers? I like this yellow too, but I'm not going to use it because I think the sunburst is fine and I want to preserve these tickets. I kind of like this blue because it's going to pull up some of that blue over there. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. So, all right. And then while I'm at it, I'm just going to pull these out and kind of like set them on to this off to the side. So maybe I remember to use them. Okay. I don't think I'll need two of the blue because the, um, oh no, I will need two of the blue. Oh shoot. Cause the, the big one is six by eight. So I will need two unless I, unless I can. And I bet I don't have two of the blue. Of course I don't. In fact, the only one I have two of is this stripe. But let's look at the scraps and see what we can maybe piece together. Well, I don't have any of that blue. I must have used it. I have, I have none of this. I have none of this. So I must have really used it down whenever I did use it. So I'm going to have to, um, piece it together. So what I need is something that will work with this blue, which to, th that I can use to put like a band across it or something like that. Um, and also let me look. at rulers. You like the stripe? So if we did the stripe, it would be, it would look like this. This would be the combination. So we have the sunburst, the type, and then the, the thing. Versus this, where if we did this, wait, I actually don't think I need to, where did I write? I wrote down the measurements. Let me not get myself into a tizzy. Let's do some research briefly. Where did I put the file folder? Where's the, oh, here it is. No, that's not, what did I, where, where's the third file folder? The one that I wrote the instructions on. Okay. What did I do with the file folder, friends? I've just completely lost the, here it is. All right, here it is, here it is, here it is. Okay. So according to this, the pattern paper is 
seven and three quarters by five and three quarters and five and three eighths. Both of those are less than six inches. This is six by eight. So I can just use the one sheet. Okay, we're back on track. We're back on track. We're back on track. Okay. All right, so these three. All right, everybody else, um, I guess go on the floor. Okay, bye. Okay, so for the four by six piece, let me write these measurements down on my template. All right. So for the small, okay, so we'll call this patterned paper. Okay, and then, um, so for the small file folder, we need one piece that is five and three quarters. Yeah, five and three quarters by um, four minus a quarter, so three, five and three quarters, no, or three and three quarters. And that's the back. And then we need one that is five and three quarters by three and, if this is three and five eighths, it's three and three eighths, right? Yeah, three and three eighths. Three and three eighths. That's the front. And then we punch those pieces at uh, one and seven eighths. And then for the medium file folder, we need one piece that's, the medium file folder is five by seven. So we need one piece that's six and three quarters by four and three quarters is the back. We need one piece that's six and three quarters by four and three eighths, which is the front. And then we punch. We want our punch to be two and a half. So the punch is two and a quarter, but it's in the middle. So we'll have to figure out where we actually punch. Okay. So those are all our measurements that we need. So four this, I need to cut these sunburst pieces. Um, I need to cut a three and three. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a three and three quarter inch. Let me, mm, I'm going to cut them first to three and three quarters and to three and three eighths, one for the front, one for the back. I'm just going to cut a strip off the bottom and then I'm going to cut an equal amount off each side so that this is centered. Okay. So let me make those first cuts and then I'll show you how I'm going to center them. So once again, one of these is three and three quarters and the other is three and three eighths. Okay. All right. So now, the ultimate size I'm going for is five and three quarters. All right. So I'm going to divide five and three quarters in half because that is going to tell me where to put this on my mat. So five and three quarters divided by two is two and seven eighths. So on the two and seven eighths inch line on my piece, I'm going to put the center of this sunburst. Okay. So that's at two and seven eighths right now, the center of my sunburst. I'm just going to cut that off. And so then I can just turn it and to five and three quarters and cut the other side. And then I have a centered sunburst. Okay. So I'm just going to do that again. 
I'm gonna put what appears to me to be the center of my sunburst on two and seven eighths. I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna turn it to five and three quarters and then I'm gonna cut. So now I have the front and the back, okay? All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put um, across the top my three quarter inch tape so that when I punch the tab, that side has plenty of tape to cover the tab and whatever's left over. And then I'll just put, you know, quarter inch tape on the rest of it. Yeah, we need to do, um, the, I have to, uh, some yellow jackets built a nest in our uh, mailbox. So now our mailbox is covered in bees. So that's fun. Um, Mr. Lifeguard got stung by a bee. Um, the mailman was just like frantically trying to avoid bees. I thought they had just gotten stuck in the mailbox. Like when I saw them, I didn't see the, a nest or anything. So I just left the mailbox open because I was hoping they would leave. Um, like somehow they got trapped in there. But now we're going to have to figure out what to do. So... That's no bueno. Um, so yeah, um, we're going to have to do something about it. Although they probably took it. They were probably like, oh, cool. We can just build here. Okay. So for the piece that goes on the front, okay, we're going to cut out this corner. Okay. So we need to put the edge at one and seven eighths and punch. All right. And then we're going to take this to the trimmer and then cut off that little bit there. Okay. And then we need to round the corners. And because I use the quarter inch chomper, I'm going to use the one eighth inch chomper to round these corners. So I'm going to use the smaller side of the yellow chomper. Spray after sundown, they go in their hive at night. Okay. Good. Good, good, good. All right. So there's that piece. So I'm going to go ahead and stick it down. And then I'm going to line this up and put it in place. Okay, I just flung my stamp off the edge. Okay, but look how cool. Look how cool that little sunburst looks. All right, so now I'm gonna take the other half of the sunburst and we're gonna do the same thing. I just need to figure out Okay, so I need to chomp this corner. So I'm gonna put it at one and seven eighths, or at, yeah, one and seven eighths, and at seven eighths, or on the edge, not at seven eighths. Okay. And then with this one, I'm gonna leave the tab and remove the rest. Okay. 
and then we're going to 1 8 inch corner chomp. And just the one corner needs to be chomped. Inking with brushed corduroy, which is a nice brown for these collections that I'm using. Okay. And then I just want to let you know that I'm starting to very lightly drop flame frames. Um, not enough to be a, like a full percentage point. So very, it's very, very light. Um, but if things kind of go off the rails again, we had very severe weather already today. And that's kind of why that might be happening. So, ah, am I good or what? Look at that. Look at that horizon. I eyeballed that. I eyeballed that. Look how cool. Okay. All right. So now we just need to put something on this piece just to line it. Now I could, um, How do I want to do? We're only doing the one hole on this one, if you guys recall, because um, we just we're just oh uh, shoot I need to remove this because you know what I'll just put the magnet under something on the back. We'll just decorate. Let me put a magnet in the center so I don't forget it. So I know it's there. Um, but we have to put a magnet on the back of this so that it doesn't kind of fly all around the um, all around the album. All right, let's just leave those out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of find the center here. And then I'll just put that magnet there and then I'll put a piece of tape over it. And then what we'll do is we'll just put a card over it. Um, when we go to finish our decorating. In fact, maybe I'll just find a card right now that I like. I'm just looking through this pad that I've got here and I think what I might do is there's this piece in here, this one with the hearts. Okay. And this is from a die cast with a view mat stack. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut so that I'm going to just cut kind of in between the two rows of hearts and then I'm just going to make this into a rectangle. Okay. All right. So now that it's a rectangle, going to take a look at that and see, do I like how that looks? I don't love it, to be honest. So that's okay. Okay new plan. All right. So with this one, 
I'm going to run tape across the top. Okay, and I'm gonna cut out this plane with its little banner. Preserve the little banner. All right, so we have this. Oh, we may have to. <laughs> I didn't anticipate it being too big. We'll we'll figure it out. Okay, so I'm going to take this now and just going to trim it. Same way I did the other thing where I'm going to take off the scallops. Wow, I cut that close. <laughs> um, whoops. All right, so now I'm going to cut, let's do two and a half by Let's start with two and a half by four. And then let's chomp it into a tag with the small angle. No, small angle looks weird. Let's use the large angle. Okay. All right, so let's see if we can surgery the plane so that it will fit. Because I think this is cute, but this looks kind of weird. So, See, ideally, I'd have this right here. And then I just need to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut. Um, the plane out. And then I'm going to cut this flat. OK. Then I'm going to ink this. Okay. I'm going to ink this too. Okay. Then ink this. All right. 
then I'm going to stick this where I want it. Well, I think I need to stick this down first, actually. And the reason why is because I want to get that lined up perfectly with my... Um, with my folder. I really want to stick that partially to the folder. And then I'm just going over the edges. And, and anything like this that I'm doing, you could do this on a card, whatever. You know, these techniques are all great for cards, etc. Al Gretchen checking in from her quilting retreat. Hope you're having a good time. All right. So, okay. We are going to stick this down. Uh-oh, Gretchen's projects are not going well, she says. All right, so I'm going to kind of place this where I want it. All right, then once I've got it where I want it, then I can stick this little banner down, okay? And then we can stick this little plane down. Let's ink the plane up. And then I think what I'm going to do is just kind of move the plane a little bit so that it looks like it's carrying the oh happy days and then that's actually just a cute little back to the card. It works great. All right, so perfect. Now what I can do is I can get out my template for my holes and I'm going to center this folder on my template. So as you can see, I've centered it. Then I'm going to flip it over to the back and draw my hole. Okay. And then, so that's where my hole is. We're going to go and use the power punch. That's the quarter inch power punch. Chomp through all the layers just so I know where the hole is going forward. And then I'm gonna set this hole. And we, like I said, we only have the one hole, but that's fine. We're gonna work with it. And unfortunately, because this is in the middle, we are gonna have to use the big bite to set the hole. But we did uh, discover a technique for doing that last, last time. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna push this through the back. Let me get out the big bite. Wait, I put that in the wrong spot. Good thing I caught it. Okay, right here. Okay. All 
All right, so with the big bite, you have to start the grommet and then you finish the grommet um, by hammering it flat with the big bite. <laughs> so this is how you use the big bite. All right, that's how we use the big bite to set the grommets. All right, so you set it with a big bite, you get it started, and then once you've got it started, then you hammer it. <laughs> you hammer it with a big bite a little bit. If I squeeze it again, does that help? I wonder. All right. It's solid, it's not actually scooching around, so we are in good shape. Okay, so that's the back. All right, that's where our, our, we're gonna put it over the ring. And then this is gonna attach to the front of the medium. So when they're like this, they'll snap to each other, okay? So in fact, why don't I prep that right now? So let's go ahead and put a little bit of tape on here and then peel the tape, okay? And then when we line these two up with each other, Okay, and now that's in the exact right spot. So I'll just put a little piece of tape over it so we don't lose it. And we're good to go for the medium. Okay, all right, so now we have to keep decorating this. All right, so, want something to go on the front here, like a card or something. Um, Oh, I like this seize the day. So what I'm gonna do is um, I'm just gonna kinda cut it out like this to square it up, okay? And then I'm gonna cover the back with tape So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out just that scrap of paper that reads seize the day. And then we're going to, then I'm going to cut it out like all torn and raggedy. Okay. Okay. All right, so we can put it here. And we just need something to make it look like to connect it fully. So I'm just gonna find like a scrap of paper that we can use something brownish. Actually, um, 
Let's go to my scrap bag and see what I've got in here. Something that might work just fine, actually. I might use that. Kind of like this. Okay, so what I need is for this side, I need a piece that's one and a half. And for this side, I need a piece that's one. So what I'm going to do is cut a one and a half inch strip off of this. And then I'm going to cut it into two, two two inch pieces. And then I'm going to cut one of those two inch pieces into a one inch piece. All right, so Gretchen's at a quilting retreat. Sandra was just at a scrapbook retreat. So people are having fun, going out and having fun. Oh, this already has tape, okay. All right, so what I need to do is figure out how much of this I need, right? So this is, <laughs> you were looking for me? Yeah, I did not attend Scrapbook Expo. Okay, so I need just like a half an inch. Yeah, I just need a half an inch of each of these pieces. Um, I haven't been to anything like that in a while, in a while. Um, I've just been trying to use what I've got, trying not to buy tons of scrapping stuff. And if I go to an expo, that's like catnip. <laughs> then I won't make it out alive. <laughs> or at least my wallet won't make it out alive. Okay. Now, but I hope you had fun and got some goodies. Got some goodies. All right, so we've got that there. Okay, and now same thing over here. No, this. Okay. I'm gonna do a half an inch. And tape. Just throwing tape everywhere. Getting a messy desk. I am going to cover the hole. That's true. I'm going to have to repunch it, but that's fine. I should have waited to do my hole until it was completely complete, but I didn't. So I'm just going to lay it flat to help me get this stuck down. 
All right. Okay. So that looks cool. I like the seize the day message with the, um, with the um, sunburst. And then because I already set the other one, I just have to uh, cut the piece out with my craft knife. All right, so now we're gonna set this. All right. Um, oops, tore my bag. Love that. Love it. Okay, so I'm gonna set this eyelet on the on the bottom part of the big bite. And then come in and squeeze the big bite, get it started. And then once again, mute if you need to. I'm gonna hammer it with the big bite. And that'll tighten it down. And then I'm gonna stick it back in the big bite just to give it another squeeze. Does that do anything at the end? No idea. All right, there we go. Okay, so that's that. Okay, so now we can shut it and we've got our file folder and then we get to add our liner. All right, so here it is. So now we just need to add whatever liner. Did I do liner on the other side? I don't think I did. Um, not the other side, but the other. Let me find the first. I'm going to go just look at my first file folder to see if I. Oh, I did line it. Okay, fine. All right, so I'm just going to put a little liner in there. And then for this one, what kind of closure do we want to do? Because I don't know if the strap is completely the right idea. Because um, it's so small. Maybe it doesn't need a closure. Um, but let to I, I only lined the back, so I'm just going to put it like down to the top of that hole. Okay, so actually I'll just use this to line it. This is perfect. Okay. All right, so I need to cut this to five and three quarters. And then I'm gonna go use the big tape across the top. And then let's see, we need to chomp it, punch it, whatever. My desk is, oh, hello. <laughs> and then it's one and seven eighths. So one and seven eighths and then on the edge. Um, and then we're going to cut the part that's not the tab off. Okay. And chomp the corner with the one eighth chomper. And then ink everything.
All right, and then slide this in. I'm just gonna put tape on the sides, but not on the bottom. Okay, looking good. So let's go ahead and stick that down. And we're just gonna slide this in we go. Perfect. 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 Okay. All right. So if we want something to hold it shut, I think my idea would be to loop a string through this hole and tie it in a knot so that it's the f one side of the string goes here and one side of the string goes there through there and then it's tied in a knot in the middle and then it'll be hanging off the back of it and it can be swung around to close it. So let me go find my string. All right, string, where did I put you? My is my craft room such a mess? Craft room, why are you like this? Okay, where is, did I put it in my staples maybe? I did, okay. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut like six inches off this and I'm gonna put one end through that side and one end through that side. All right, and that's gonna give me this little bit here. So I'm just gonna tie these into a knot or try to tie them into a knot. All right, and I've got them now tied into a knot. Just gonna trim, okay. All right, so, whoop! Apparently my knot was not correct. All right, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut a bigger piece because I can always shorten it. So I'm gonna give myself eight inches so I have just that extra little bit to get the knot tied better. Okay. So 
so now what I can do is tie a knot. All right, we did it. <laughs> we did it. So even when the ring is in here, we'll still be able to pull this up and it'll just be on the other side of the ring. Okay? And it'll hold everything inside. All right, so we have completed this. So let me show you what I mean, how this strap will still work when it's in the book. So when it's in the book, you can still pull this off to get into the folder. This needs to be ever so slightly narrower. I'm wondering if I will, if I angle the corners, if that will solve my problem. Or not. Just gonna Yeah. Yeah, that helps. It's still a little tight. These two holes must be six inches apart. So, I mean, it's not going to lay flat. That's what I don't like. So I wonder if we need to change the size of this little guy. Um, Or what do we need to do? Just gonna experiment. Just <sighs> fine, I'll unhook all the holes. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna corner chomp, do it, I'm gonna cut a notch in this. And then yeah so it has to have a notch in order to move smoothly so we either need to shrink it or just or it can just have a notch I don't know how we how we want to do that it's gonna mostly stick to the one behind it because this one will be right behind it and these two will be kind of held together. So I don't know. I don't like the notch. So I think we're going to have to resize this small one and make it even smaller. So let me, um, let me do a recording break. And instead of one that's four by six, we'll make one that's three and a half by five. Three and a half by five. So in the next video, I will do just a dedicated tutorial for a three and a half by five, and that'll be the new size of the small one. Okay, so um, if you're watching live, just hang tight. Nothing's going to change for you. If you're watching the playlist, then just remember that uh, you can continue to look in the playlist backwards or forwards to find the 
measurements for the things that you're looking for. So in the next video, we'll be doing the making a three and a half inch by five inch file folder. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.